now for a business update on the programme. For that, I'm joined here in the studio by Anka Hula, who's uh, with us. And we're going to get back to Brazil, in fact, aren't we, Anka? We're uh, talk about that reaction to Jair Bolsonaro's win in Brazil's presidential election. That's right, Stuart. Bolsonaro was the market favourite going forward over leftist Fernando Haddad, who analysts just didn't see as having the chops to turn Brazil's stagnant economy around. Now, the country's currency, the real, got a slight boost after results came in, but it has been steadily climbing since September. Let's take a look at a graph here of the real. It'll come up in just a second. There we go. It has been dropping through July, but starting September, the market had started pricing in, um, investors had started pricing in Bolsonaro's win. So the reaction today is subtle, but they do seem to have a bit more confidence with Bolsonaro at the helm. Now, Bolsonaro has admitted that he's an economic newcomer, but part of the reason that he's a reassuring pick for the business world is because of his single economic advisor, Paulo Guedes. Expected to be named finance minister, Guedes will have the monumental task of pulling Brazil's economy out from the depths amid increasing global uncertainty weighing down on global markets. Luke Trego tells us more about his background. This is Paulo Guedes, the architect of Jair Bolsonaro's entire economic program. In just one year, the 69-year-old investor has made himself indispensable to the far-right firebrand, hoping to usher free market policy into Brazilian politics. Educated at the University of Chicago, Guedes has taught both in Brazil and Chile under Augusto Pinochet's dictatorship and made his fortune from betting against failed economic plans in the 80s and 90s. Throughout Bolsonaro's campaign, he convinced him to opt for a pro-business approach rather than the state-led model of the nation's former military government. For Bolsonaro, it's now about cutting pensions, privatization and deregulation. Nobody wants to hire anyone right now. Nobody wants to invest. What would you invest in in Brazil and who would you sell it to? That's what we've come to and Paulo Guedes can negotiate with the market. Before the election, Bolsonaro promised Guedes free reign as a proposed super minister, combining the finance, planning and trade ministries. However, the campaign did expose rifts in the team. While Guedes has let slip about a financial transaction tax, privatizing state oil firm Petrobras and the Banco do Brasil, Bolsonaro's run hot and cold on such policies, calling some of them a mistake. Elsewhere, Geddes's position may be more uncertain still. He faces investigation into potential mismanagement of public money, something he denies. Well, global markets are still struggling after a major sell-off last week. Losses in Asia today were led by Shanghai, which was down more than 2%. Hong Kong about flat, Kospi in Seoul down 1.5%. Tokyo's Nikkei closing its third straight session in the red. It closed down 0.16% after shedding nearly 6% last week. Next, British Finance Minister Philip Hammond will present the UK's 2019 budget before Parliament later today. It's the last budget before the country's exit from the European Union. The rampant uncertainty as negotiations continue with the EU has made this routine task incredibly difficult. Hammond is expected to lay out the government's plans to ease off austerity measures, but he admitted that a no-deal Brexit could force the budget to be completely rewritten. If the economy, um, as a result of a no-deal Brexit, or indeed because of something else that we haven't mm. uh, anticipated, needs support uh, over the coming months and years, I have the capacity uh, to provide that support. So if there was an unexpected turn of events, the right thing to do uh, would be to revisit uh, where we are, decide how best to respond. That depends on what markets are doing, it depends on the circumstances of the moment. But the important point is I have got fiscal reserves that would enable me to intervene. Well, finally for business, IBM is taking a major step towards cloud computing with one of the biggest tech mergers in history. On Sunday, the company said it reached a deal to buy US-based open source software company Red Hat for $34 billion. IBM CEO says that if the merger is approved, IBM will become the world's leading hybrid cloud provider. That's it for the business. Stuart, back to you. Thanks very much, Anka. Anka with the business for you on France 24.